Hola, everyone. So I have Pragnya on board with me today, who secured an All India Rank Four in CLAT and All India Rank Seventy Two in A Lit, confirming her seats in the dream NLU she desired for, and then making a choice between you know NLU Delhi and and surprisingly Nalsar Hyderabad because she always opted for Hyderabad as a first priority because she belongs to the state of Telangana. So hometown hai. So obviously she is willing to go for this. Pragnya was a student of our boot camp program, and she actually in her, is um, she is actually in her boards as well. So maintaining a balance between the two. So we'll have a brief discussion about her journey throughout the CLAT preparation, and as well as taking the insights. How did she work on these strong areas, weak areas, mock analysis, and everything? So Pragnya, first of all, tell me what was the feeling when you actually saw your rank. So sir, uh, that day, December tenth, I had just written my A lit. I went to Nalsir to write my my A lit, and it was a long drive back. So it was almost two hours to and fro from our house. And when I did come back, uh, the entire evening from almost four o'clock to eight o'clock in the night was spent in clicking that result button again and again because it was loading for anyone. Mm -hmm. And at the end, uh, me and my mom kind of like we got tired. So we just went and started watching some Telugu movie. Then we suddenly, suddenly got to know that the results are out. My mom checked it actually. I did not see the result then, but okay. first my mom checked it. Then she kind of like shouted, shrieked, <laughs> uh, let out a shriek of joy basically, and that's how I came to know. So all in the rank four. All in the rank four. Yeah. Uh -huh. For me, I wasn't really expecting it. Uh, I was in that. a uh, mentality where rank is not going to make a major difference for me it's the college which i want but the minute my mom heard i got all in the rank 4 she was proud and that was the only thing i wanted from my entire graduation great great so you made your parents proud you made all of us proud in fact achieving a single digit rank in clat exam is not a small deal although you wanted to opt for hyderabad but theek hai it's about you choosing the college you desire for um pragnya you were always a rigorous reader like um, you said me before also that uh, during the pandemic you stopped reading but then again when you focused for clat you started reading once again and so tell me how this reading activity helped you in your clat preparation and what role did it play in sections like logical reasoning and reading comprehension specifically so so uh, one of the major things i did when i started my clat journey was figure out the strategy for attempting clat and of course clat has three very heavy sections all of them based on reading so i knew from the start that i had to improve my reading skills my speed my accuracy my understanding of the concepts basically and uh, then of course i came across mocks which had very complicated shakespearean uh, type of english i did not in the understand even a single line in them so that's when i had to get back to my reading skills i uh, luckily my grandfather and my grandmother both of them are like english teachers so we had almost 10 or 20 books of this length of shakespeare i started reading them and that if not anything it will at least help you build your confidence in the sense right. that you will feel maine itna bada book complete kar diya hai of course i have the knowledge to attempt this particular section or you will feel i understood this book how much is a mock in front of this and apart from that of course it will help you in your vocabulary it will help you in your reading speed itself it will help you in analyzing the pa passage mm. so uh, it's a very imp important skill to develop so what role did the newspaper play um i heard this advice so that i need to read the newspaper every day but for me honestly it didn't help out that much um i would say i prefer reading books or novels over reading newspapers mainly because i got my current affairs done from monthly magazines or uh, actually i was about we were forming a study buddy group and we did an entire gk there itself so i didn't need to read the newspaper specifically for my reading skills or my current affairs i did it for one two months just to get in the flow and then i stopped it okay great to know that so um Unlike others, those students who prepare for CLAT normally, you know, rely upon newspapers a lot. But then it is proved by Pragnya that not only you have to rely on newspaper; it is just about developing your reading skills, and that may be through uh, some novels or some other magazines you can 
सेम चलो ग्रेट प्रगन्या व्हाट वाज योर स्ट्रांगेस्ट सेक्शन एंड हाउ डिड यू फोर्टिफाई इट फर्दर व्हेन यू एक्चुअली प्रिपेयर्ड फॉर क्लैट सो फॉर मी सर माय स्ट्रांगेस्ट सेक्शन वाज ऑफ कोर्स लीगल um that was the main reason why i wanted it clad uh, and also the passages which we used to get in almost all the mocks they were genuinely interesting for me so that was a passage i always used to look forward to and when i attempted the actual clad paper also that was the first section i opened and that way that increased my confidence to 110% so that's i think one good tip always start with your strongest sections and then uh, after that my uh, my other strong section was logical followed by english of course reading sections have, have always been my strongest but logical mainly because uh, i had to read and rely on my basics for one month so one month of my clad journey was spent on learning what an assumption is how to identify it what is a conclusion differences things like that and um at the end when i completed logical and legal properly that was what boosted my score to the top 10 or the top 20 in my coaching mocks also great so when you appeared for mocks uh, during your clat preparation initially when um, you started scoring it was in 60s then during september august september your score went up a little and then finally in the last 10 15 mocks you used to score 90 but then it is very important for the students to know how did you actually you know boost up your score from starting from 50 60 and then finally ending up to consistently above 90 in the last 10 15 box so i would like to have some insights from you so that it uh, helps the students yes sir. so uh, i think the first thing each person sh- should do is uh, this management thing called spot analysis identify your strong sections identify your weak sections for me my weak sections were uh, uh, qt and gk mainly because i'm from a humanities background so i don't really know that qt so. qt is something which is obviously a pain point for almost <laughs> every <laughs> yeah so <laughs> in the beginning i was of the mindset ki if i don't learn qt also it's fine uh, that was when i was scoring in 50s 60s but those mm-hmm. 10 marks are going to make the difference between let's say nlsiu or nalsir the once i understood that um i started practicing qt and that's when my score shot up by at least 7 points because before i didn't used to attempt qt at all um that was one main thing the wait second... wait 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 so here a great insight to be taken for the students please understand qt plays a role so like many of you believe that theek hai qt nahi karna i can leave qt no hear it from the mouth of the topper she is saying that this is something which will create a difference from your journey to probably nlsiu to nalsa or maybe other institute and 7.5 marks is a huge marks given the density of students falling in the you know uh, range score range of 90 to 95 so please understand the importance of qt right ha huh. please you may continue hmm. yes sir and the second thing i did was uh, i noticed the pattern in my mocks when i was analyzing them that i always used to make mistakes in certain types of questions like parallels or maybe something related to uh, legal only where they were asking questions based on time date stuff like that so uh, one thing i do is when you analyze a mock write where you went wrong for each and every question you went wrong don't mm. just look at the explanation also think for yourself why you must have chosen that particular option i find the best way to do that is to write down but i mean anyone else can like just think about it i guess so once you figure out your pattern it's easier to break it and once i started doing that in my assumption questions in my parallel questions that also added 2 3 4 5 marks and maybe from 70 i went to 75 and um, yeah that was one thing break your patterns um my vocabulary was actually weak um all my other english topics were set i was very good in poetic de- devices similes all that but my vocabulary was very weak simply because i hated vocabulary i did not want to be that person who used to study the dictionary i never wanted to be that person so uh there was this one list online it's a free website of the most important words in the english language i used to go and read that once or twice every week 
and once you keep refreshing that it's easier to remember it and mm. turns out that happened to be where majority of the vocabulary questions came from so those small small things those small small questions which you feel like okay if we leave this question in this mock it's fine those can make a big difference in the actual exam right theek hai we heard it from 60 to 75 now tell me how did you manage from 75 to consistently scoring 90 in the last few months because that must have boosted your confidence level as well for the actual cat exam no yes uh, the minute i touched 90 i remember that was the day where i felt very confident about my chances in cat because coming from 60s to 90s was a very big deal for me and that happened within the duration of 2 months so that kind of like boosted my confidence even more uh one main reason why that happened was my gk was also very weak i used to do a lot of sources that was my main mistake where i used to go to um, new sites research on my own i used to go to ias websites read i used to watch videos online i used to do two three monthly magazines and that messed up my gk so in let's say october specifically october we formed a study buddy group with all my other friends or uh, one of them got all in the rank 20 uh, sorry 40 in flat Mm-hmm. and that was when we decided we were going to do gk on our own and we made this document of 450 pages and revised it before clat and that was uh, revised it one month before clat so in the november month my major increase in marks came from the gk section because it's the most unpredictable section and at the same time it is the most uh, let's say rank making section because it is 28 marks and it is one section where you will be able to differentiate one candidate from the other right so um that maybe added more like 10 marks because i was scoring on an average at 15 or 16 and then it increased to 20 22 which again boosted my confidence because i was like if i can do gk i can do anything else in this entire um right Yes. So, um, having said that, because she said that K G K is something which is quite unpredictable, and like this year happened, almost all the questions were in the passages itself. I mean, the answers could be found in the passages itself. Right. Then we had a passage on from modern history, which is not, uh, you know, uh, very usually seen in the CLAT paper. One of the passage was was on General Dyer, so that was something unexpected, right? But then, uh, okay, she like she said that if you actually keep on making notes and then revising it consistently you can actually create a difference in gk okay uh, you are a board student as well and uh, probably you might have to go to student uh, you know school regularly so jaisa ki hame pata hai you used to go to school regularly before august but then you started skipping the schools and then finally in the last two months you stopped going to school almost preparing for clat now how did you actually maintain a balance between your school when you used to go to and your clat preparation how many hours did you used to devote for your clat preparation and when you uh, actually how many hours to each section uh, how did you break up this number of hours which you devoted for clat that is what i would like to know right from the day when you used to you no know, maintain a balance between your school and preparation and then in the last two months Uh, so so one main advantage which i had was i am from the humanities background and all my subjects were the subjects i really liked so uh, this is a very <laughs> weird thing for me but in the summer holidays itself i had gone through majority of my portion because i was genuinely interested in all my subjects um, sociology political science economics and somehow they helped me in the gk section uh, of statics also but again these were subjects i was genuinely interested in so i didn't need to put in much effort and the second thing which happened was uh, like i said before uh, when we were talking so i was very clear that i had to prioritize clat over boards at least until december after that it's boards till january february march but before that it's going to be clat so one of the main things i did was uh, my half yearly is happened in august so after august i didn't really study anything related to boards or school i used to go to school but my teachers was, teachers are going to kill me for saying this but i used to sit in class bench and study gk material or other clat notes 
which I had with me. I and knew I had to do that. Let it be a secret. <laughs> huh. Because huh. I knew that once I got home, I'm not going to be able to study for much longer. Uh, it's physically exhausting to go to school, come back, the traveling part, everything. So I used to study in school. And then when I come back home, maybe maximum two hours of break. So one thing was I didn't really make my timetable according to sections. It was more like on that particular day, I want to perfect this particular section. So I will start with legal. Then I will go to some other section which I like, like English. But I always used to do GK and QT. There were the two constant subjects I used to do every day, at least in uh, September onwards. Hmm. Because my QT was weak, I used to give it half an hour every day. And GK, maybe one hour because it included a lot, a, a lot of reading, revising, and relearning. Then legal and English were essentially my stress breakers. Passages are obviously interesting for me. So it was easier to do them in between these sections. So a typical day in my life would look like 8 a.m. go to school, come back at 3.30, at least till 4, 4.30, I won't do anything. After 4.30, I used to start with legal first, go for one hour, and then QT, followed by GK, completed with English or logical, and I it used to go on till 12 in the night, easily. And then sleep, repeat. Ah, that is required. So, um, after your school hours, so the kind of routine you have given it is probably somewhat like four to five hours, definitely for plat on a regular basis. But after you stopped going to school for the last two months, what was your preparation strategy? So, uh, when I stopped going to school, I used to wake up really late around nine, mainly because I, I'm a night person. So I studied in the night. I slept during the day. I slept at, at around 12 o'clock. I woke up at eight, nine ish. And then the first thing I would do is QT because my mom used to say that first subject you do of the day, let it be tough because you know, you have a fresh mind. And then, um, uh, from September onwards, majority of my time would go to GK mm -hmm. because it's my weaker section and it requires a lot of efforts. And by that time, sir, I had actually managed to find tricks and tips for all the three reading sections. So I didn't need to practice it that much, except maybe in the mocks. So one bad strat strategy I followed actually was doing mocks every day during September. Uh, and every day, two hours, I used to sit and write mocks. I followed that for one week or two weeks max. But after that, after that, you kind of drain out of energy and you basically burnt out. And that's when I stopped and decided I'm going to make a proper timetable. I tried following it. It did not work for me. At least I'm a person who cannot follow a timetable. So one major tip which I would give is study according to your mood. If you feel like your brain can take more than two hours of GK, do it. Otherwise, go for some other sections. But make sure you put in at least six to eight hours every day. Hmm. That is that is quite correct. Until unless the study you put in, if it is not productive, it doesn't make sense. So until unless your brain is ready to accept whatever you're reading, there is no point in wasting your time. So that is very correctly said. Um, TK, so uh, now what message would you like to give to the students, the aspirants who would be uh, writing their CLAT exam or ALIT exam next year? First is, I think uh, all the mentors on YouTube and every single CLAT coaching must have said this, but again, do not let your mock scores get you down. Do not judge your final ranking on the basis of your mock scores. Do not attempt to prophesize the future. The future is not in your control. Only the efforts you put in that is under your control. First thing is that. Second thing, have that attitude of never giving up. For me personally, I have like a really supportive uh, background. My friends were always there for me. My family was always there for me. But even during that brief uh, three months period where I was not going to school, I got a lot of uh, doubt as they say in Hindi. I used to wake up at night. So obviously everyone in my house was like, and all that. that is normal. That happens. Do not let others get you down. You know what you're doing. 
you have a strategy follow it have confidence mm-hmm. in it. and i think the third and the most important tip that i have personally received is fake it till you make it even during the clat day on december 3rd i never knew that i was going to get all in the rank 4 i went with the mindset ki uh, i will do my best let us leave the rest and i think that really helped me because i did not have that much pressure on myself during that day and the second thing was that i wasn't really concerned about the results i knew and i knew for a fact that i would get into nalsur which was my college of choice so that also decreased my pressure a little and one more thing i did during the exam was kind of block out everyone and every thought in my brain by playing songs music is one of the most important things according to me at least music and the uh, background you come from or the support system you have i was very lucky to have friends who could who i could call at 12 in the night to wake them up and talk to them about clat or some anxiety issues i had stuff like that kept happening so summarizing fake it till you make it have confidence in yourself and never judge your mock res- never judge your clat results on the basis of your mock scores that is very very important well said so uh, thank you so much praganya for uh, you know uh, giving your insights giving your valuable words and your experience in the clad journey that would definitely help this students would be aspiring for clad next year and i wish you all the very best for all your future endeavors thank, thank you so much praganya thank you